Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We're here in Fort Worth, Texas, hanging out at the Texas Air Gun Show. We thought we'd come by Air Force Air Guns to have a look around and give you guys a little bit of a tour. A uh, really nice new facility that they've built here. And uh, they make some really awesome air rifles. You guys know that our first kind of uh, exposure to air guns has been with Air Force Air Guns. So we thought it'd be cool to kind of see where all the magic happens and see where these things are made. And in my own words, if I had to really kind of describe their company and what they do with their products, you know, and, and bear in mind, guys, that I'm a little bit of a layman with air guns, but in my experience with air guns, the things that I like a lot about Air Force and their guns is the fact that, you know, they're very utilitarian. It's a gun that you can take out, you can beat up, you can hunt with it, you can use it. They're made to be used. You know, they're not toys. Uh, they are a full-time use, uh, hard-use air gun that you can take out and really have fun with. Two is the fact that a lot of the innovation and things they put into their products are a lot of first-time innovations in the air gun industry. Like, they do a lot of really cool processes for making their guns. They make them really, really unique. And the level of passion uh, that's obviously present here at this place is very apparent. These people love making air rifles, and you can definitely tell. So we're going to go around, have a look, and show you a little bit of the processes, how they're made, show off their facility a little bit, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Let's get after it. All right, guys, this part of the warehouse that we're in is where all the raw materials come uh, in and out. This is kind of the first step of the process because you can't make an air gun without raw materials, right? Well, one of the raw materials, if you can call it raw material, that they use are Lothar Walther barrels from Germany. Uh, all of these crates behind me are Lothar Walther barrels of various sizes and lengths uh, for all of their different models. So they are German barrels, which are very high quality. These barrels shoot excellent, and uh, these are made to their specifications. Uh, this particular barrel I'm holding right here is for a Texan 45, nice big bore air rifle there, uh, which is an awesome air rifle by the way. A lot of the other storage here is a, a various other raw components that are machined and are in the white. Uh, they're awaiting their batch processes to be sent out uh, to be anodized. So they don't do their own anodizing here, uh, but they batch process everything, get a lot of them together, send them over, get them anodized, and they have a quality control uh, where they can check and make sure the anodizing is proper color, thickness, and everything is to their specification. So uh, that allows them to really control the quality of the product that they're putting out and everything like that. So here's the raw materials, pretty basic. Uh, this is where it all starts. We're going to move on and uh, show some other processes into making this air rifle. Let's do it. All right, so moving along, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of extrusions here. This is some more of the raw materials that are uh, used to make their air rifles. This extrusion right here is what they use to machine their scope mounts. So they basically buy these in big, long sections and they cut them up into short pieces, which are then finished machined into whatever the finished product needs to be. And then, of course, they're anodized. That's pretty straightforward there. All right, this is a receiver extrusion. These are bought in big, long bars, and then they're cut down to whatever length they need to be. And this is one type of extrusion that they have, and they can basically cut whatever length and whatever profile they need out of this one extrusion. So if they're making a Condor, if they're making a Texan, if they're making whatever, they can use the same extrusion and that makes uh, things a lot easier and everything like that. So that's pretty cool. This is the raw material. This is where their air gun start is out of this uh, extrusion right here. So we're going to move on and look at how these things are actually machined and let's go have a look at that. All right, so going from raw materials, we're over here where all the magic happens, and it literally is magic if you saw the way these machines back here work. So basically the extrusion gets cut to whatever appropriate length it needs for whatever type of receiver they're going to be making or whatever type of scope mount or anything, the base extrusion that's going in there. It gets put in the machine indicated, and they run a program, it cuts it out, and bam, you've got a receiver. This is a Texan receiver, and, and this particular one is a hero piece. Obviously, they come out of the machine in the white. This is one that's been uh, kind of looked over, and this is sort of the type of one that they can check clearances and tolerances. If they need to check a measurement, they always keep a couple of the receivers laying around, where they can check clearances and tolerances, make sure that machines are putting out the quality product that they expect and everything like that. So uh, there are some other processes that I can't show you because obviously trade secrets and things like that, um, but that's the basic premise uh, of something like this. It starts out as an extrusion, it's finished machined, and you've got a receiver. So let's move on. We're going to have a look at a few other things. Let's do it. All right, so after the scope mounts, receiver sections, whatever part they're making is pulled out of the machine. Uh, it goes out to a vibratory tumbler that removes most of the machining burrs. All right, then it comes into this room and the items are blasted. Um, prior to these 
uh, being able to be anodized, they have to be blasted off and have a nice uniform surface uh, free of any kind of nasty particulates or fingerprints or uh, little marks. Any type of mark left on this uh, receiver will show through in the anodizing and it'll be permanent once it's anodized. So they have to make sure they're nice and clean. This particular one is fresh out of the machine. This, is, uh, this one's already been tumbled, but it has yet to be uh, blasted. So after they're blasted, they're sent out to uh, obviously be anodized. Now we're going to go have a look at the quality control process after the parts come back from the anodizer. All right, well, we've got our parts back from the anodizer. You can see that this one's been anodized blue. Uh, they do a couple of different colors for some of the models. Most of the anodizing is done in black uh, because everything looks good in black, right? Uh, but you can see here, this is a blue uh, extrusion that's been machined. Everything's good. It's anodized. This is ready for quality control inspection and assembly. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. We're going to have a look at a few of the quality control uh, aspects, and we're going to go over to the bench and have a look at where they assemble these things. All right, before we move on, we can't forget about the barrels, uh, the Lothar Walthers we saw earlier. We sent those out to the bluer, and we got them back. So they come back in the same crates, all blued, everything looking real nice. Uh, these are 308 caliber Texan barrels ready for assembly. We're going to go over here and have a look and uh, move on. Let's do it. So in addition to the extrusions that are finished machined, the barrels that get back from the bluer, Air Force also makes a lot of the smaller internal components of uh, each air gun. And all of those parts are individually quality control checked before they ever go out to be finished in any type of way. Uh, so they would never even get a finished product uh, back in from the refinisher unless it would already pass their quality control inspection. The area that I'm in right here, this is the assembly area. So they have a variety of different bins with all the different SKUs and parts. And this is where all the magic happens. They take all the completed components and they make each individual gun and assemble them right here. Uh, the guns are serial numbered. They have a laser engraver over here. And basically they have a matrix of different serial numbers that they can input, engrave the receivers, and that way they can follow this gun from where it was made to whoever it winds up to. One of the important things about these guns that I think is neat to mention, they are American made, which is awesome. You're getting a good quality American made product. But then too, there's also a lifetime warranty. So they want to make sure that that lifetime warranty follows the original purchaser of the gun. Uh, it is to the original purchaser of the, of the gun. But this is where they're all assembled. All the guns that are around me right here are ones that are already sold and ready to go out the door and they're being assembled and ready to go over to the shipping department. Uh, there are a few other things that we'll talk about first though, but pretty awesome stuff. All right, we're on the test fire range here at Air Force and uh, we've got actually a very, very new gun that's out. This is the Integral Suppressed Texan. It's not bad. He's collecting some uh, velocity and chronograph data, just doing some diagnostic and kind of checking the gun out a little bit. Um, so this is where they can test guns uh, for function, accuracy, everything like that. And uh, basically once the guns are assembled, they're ready to go out to the shipping department. <laughs> Not bad at all. Definitely quieter than the standard Texan. And one thing too is, you know, we are indoors and this is a metallic, uh, you know, the, the walls of this room are metallic and that gives the gun a higher sounding pitch than it really has. That kind of metallic ring that you're hearing is really more off of the reflection of the walls. If you shot this outside, it's a lot quieter. That's really cool. All right, guys, so last step in the process, we're here in the shipping department. Not really much to look at. I mean, guys, it's a shipping department. Once the guns are boxed up, quality control, everything, uh, uh, hook and ladder, all done, they get sent off to their happy homes wherever they're going to wind up. And uh, that's how an Air Force gun is made, boys and girls. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, Texas has been an awesome state. Everybody's been ultra friendly to us and very, very nice, uh, except for the people at Whataburger. We won't talk about that. But overall, really nice experience. Uh, we are going to be going to the air gun show here tomorrow. So we're going to be showing off a wide variety of different stuff from a wide variety of different manufacturers. Also, some collectors bring out a, a bunch of neat air rifles. So we're going to go and just try to, you know, look at it with an open mind. We're going to cover the air gun show tomorrow and try to show off some really cool stuff for you guys. Let me know if you like these tours. Uh, you know, Air Force was nice enough to shut down their facility for us here to kind of have a little go through their, uh, you know, wares and show you guys around a little bit. But let us know if you like these tours. Is there a, a specific manufacturer that you want us to visit? You know, maybe we'll see if we can put something like that together and do more of these types of videos. But that's how an Air Force air gun's made from start to finish. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time.